director in charge of the environmental program of I. Next slide, please. Um, we had planned initially face-to-face uh, -face, uh, seminars during for all the ICAO regions uh, during the month of March, April this year. And due to the, due to the coronavirus crisis, we, we had to postpone the, this 2020 Costa Regional Seminars for later this year. Um, we, in fact, we have not yet established the dates for the new uh, regional seminars. They will be announced to you as soon as it's decided in ICAO. Um, with uh, the intent of providing you um, the focal points in, in uh, every state with the, the necessary information for you to, to be able to accomplish your work on the reporting uh, through the CCR of your um, 2019 uh, uh, CO2 emissions from the, your operators. We have uh, prepared this uh, uh, webinar. This is a remote uh, three-hour training session on specifically the Corsia Central Registry. Um, we have not covered any other subjects during this webinar. Um, when we have our face-to-face, -face, we will uh, be able to cover other updates. But right now, what we the, the most pressing issue was to make sure that you are uh, familiar to that you have used and you are comfortable in using the, the Corsa Central Registry. So this is not a replacement of the 2020 Corsa Regional Seminars. We intend to do them and as soon as possible, but it will uh, give you the necessary tools to continue to undertake your work on the course implementation up to then. Next slide. So, as you are aware, from 1st January 2019, all the operators conducting international flights, they were required to monitor their CO2 emissions from these flights. At the end of last, uh, of the end of 2018, in fact, um, uh, operators and uh, states have already met, they have already uh, decided on their, uh, how they were going to do their uh, emissions reporting through their emissions monitoring plan. And in the 1st of January, they start collecting that information. That information then that's compiled by the operators in the correspondent annual emissions reports, they will be subject to a third party verification. So, um, 31st May 2020 was the deadline, is the deadline for the operators to submit to states their uh, 2019 uh, CO2 emissions report. And states then will receive that information from the operators, from the verifiers, and they will compile the information from all operators. And by 31st August 2020, they shall submit to ICAO their aggregate CO2 uh, emissions from uh, 2019 per state part. And that's going to be done through the Corsa Central Registry. Remember that that's an exercise that we'll do with the emissions from 2019 and the emissions from 2020, as those uh, are going to be the basis for the Corsa baseline. Next slide. So the objective of this seminar today um, is to provide information on course of focal points on how to use the main functionalities of the CCR is to and, and to facilitate when we have our face-to-face -face training, um, uh, facilitate the entire understanding of this uh, process. You will be initially trained on the, the CCR during the face-to-face -face training, you have the opportunity of um, enhancing your knowledge on the, the CCR. But um, when you have our face-to-face -face, uh, training, you will also be acquainted with other areas of the Corsia and will be updated on those areas. So right now, uh, in this uh, webinar, you have a full introduction to the CCR you have this general familiarization with the web interface and how to upload the CO2 emissions into the CCR and how to submit 
the CO2 emissions to IK. Next uh, slide, please. So here's the plan. We'll have two segments. We'll have a break in between the two segments. Uh, we are doing now the welcome and objectives. Then you go to the introduction of the C uh, to the CCR. Then you have your question and answers. We'll have a demo on the CCR. Um, each, if each of you uh, in your um, state has received your state account in the training version for the CCR to use during this training, um, you will have chances, of course, always to, to um, uh, make question and answers, but you have this specific time to get familiar with the CCR. Then we are going to break. Then we'll have a demo on how to report the CO2 emissions. We will have an in-class exercise, then question and answers again. Then we'll have a demo uh, on the service request, then another opportunity for question and answers. And then we'll be uh, doing the closing of the seminar. Next slide, please. Now, very important is we uh, all realize that this is, um, for many of you, something new, this go-to meeting. Uh, it's a new system for you to engage uh, in this training. We have a lot of people in that call. We are expecting around 60. We already have 52 online. And um, it's important that all of you receive clearly and hear clearly the information we have to provide. That's why we have muted all of you apart from the presenter. Um, you will have uh, nevertheless chances to ask questions throughout the seminar. The way you are going to do that is you have on the top right of your screen what we, we call the chat function of this webinar. And uh, how do you use that? You click in that speech bubble icon that you have to the, uh, uh, on the top. It's close to the participants list participants list is those little um, people that you see on top as well. So if you click on this chat function, and you should do it now uh, to be familiarized, you then can enter your question on the bottom and you send it, okay? So everyone uh, will be seeing, not only the presenter. When you send, you send to all, okay? We will not be looking into other means of questioning because we do have that uh, um, bubble there. Um, if you are connected only by audio, then you might uh, send something to, to um, IKU, but everybody that's connected to the GoToMeeting should use this chat function, okay? Um, how we are going to address your question? So um, the, the presenter will be receiving your questions, taking a look, but um, the presenter will decide if it takes the question during the presentation or after. And the, mo the biggest reason for that is that most probably you are a little bit ahead of the game and there will be the explanation in the next slide. So if you wait a little bit, your question will be addressed in the next slide. If that's not the case, or if, is, if, if it is a recurring uh, question, we will address it after the presentation. Okay, so next slide, please. You have received a lot of information by now on Corsia. Um, a lot of really uh, easy to apply, uh, very practical information on how to do things, lists of tasks with dates, etc., explanations. Um, and just before you joined this webinar, you also got an email with four more leaflets for you. These four more leaflets are new leaflets that we have uh, prepared for this webinar. And they, um, they are all about uh, specific features of the, the, the CCR. And they are for your uh, per use while you're um, using the CCR. If you have any specific question in any of those features, it's an easy to consult material. So it's, it's, um, it's very good that you keep that with you, put that in your files, because when you as a focal point, you'll be doing things, maybe you have a small 
adult, that's an easy to consult uh, source that you have with you. Now, before we enter in the subject matter, I understand that uh, those are very difficult times. I'm uh, very happy to see how many of you uh, were able to join us today. And um, I want to reassure you once again that um, we in the Secretariat are doing our best to support you, uh, and the best of our capabilities, um, even remotely uh, on um, any, any activities that you need to undertake for courses. So do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, we are all working remotely uh, in the environment team. Um, my team will be with you throughout the, the presentation this morning and make sure that you ask all your questions. Um, any of the uh, technical difficulties are also being taken care offline. Um, Amaury will be talking to each one of you that are um, informing us on a problem or any technical issues uh, to join. It's a new uh, experience to you. It's our last uh, webinar we have done in the four other regions before and it was very successful in providing the information to the participants. So I wish you all a very, very successful webinar uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jane, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Stelios Pesmazoglu. I'm a program officer uh, with the Environment Branch of the ICAO Secretariat. And um, what I'm going to talk to you about in the next um, hour or so is uh, the CCR itself. I will give you a general introduction to the CCR, and also I will demonstrate to you some of its main features. But before I do that, I would like to make sure that you all know how to log in into the CCR. We create accounts for all of you, and so you must have received an email message from Turanto. If you have not received an email message, please also check your spam folder in case it has uh, gone there. Um, this email message will have a web link that you can use to set up your password. <clears throat> After you have set up your passwords, you cannot reuse the same web link. What you have to do to log in into the CCR is to type into your browser corsia.turanto.com as you can see on your screen. Please note, there is no www before uh, uh, Corsia. It is straight uh, corsia.turanto.com. Again, this is um, um, the site that we're using for the training. Of on the CCR, and this may change in the future. So um, if, you, if you have received an email message and you were not able to set up your password because the web link has expired, what you can do is, uh, is you can go to this page as you see on your screen, corsia.turando.com, and click on forgot password at the bottom. So if you do that, then you will get this pop-up on your screen where you enter your email, or your username. Your username will be uh, in the email message that you received from Toronto. Uh, it will be part of the email message or your official email address. And then you will receive another email message that you can follow to set up your uh, password. In any case, as uh, Jane mentioned, if you have any problems, uh, please send a message uh, to Mr. Amaury Caruso. And he's listed on uh, the participants list that um, we have for today's seminar and you will be more than happy to assist you with um, any problems you have getting access to the CCR. But we'll come back to this one uh, later. So let us start with, um, with our presentation and um, uh, for the segment one, which is the general introduction to the Corsia Central Registry. So let me put up the presentation. Let's start from the, at the beginning, uh, why we're doing this. Uh, the idea of having a consolidated central registry for Corsia appeared at the Assembly Resolution A393. In paragraph 20G of that Assembly Resolution, the Assembly requested the Council to establish a central registry under the auspices of ICAO and make it operational no later than 1st of January 2021. Following that Assembly Resolution, the ICAO Council undertook work on the development of Annex 16, Volume 4. And in the context of this work, 
the Corsia Central Registry was identified as one of the five implementation elements of Corsia. More recently, um, in last October actually, the Assembly Resolution A40, uh, the 40th Assembly Resolution, sorry, the 40th Assembly um, adopted the Resolution A4019. And there are two, there are two specific subparagraphs in that resolution, 19B and 19D, that refer specifically to the Corsia Central Registry. The first one is referring to making sure that we use the Corsia Re Central Registry to continue to develop and update uh, documents which are referenced in Annex 16, Volume 4. And the second reference is in relation to the establishment of the Corsia Central Registry by early 2020. And so we are already in April. The Corsia Central Registry has been developed. And so what we will, uh, what we will uh, show you uh, in this segment and in the following segment is only parts of uh, the capabilities of the CCR. Some other things will be left for the face-to-face -face training that will happen in the context of the regional seminars later this year. So I would like, first of all, to give you a bird's eye view of um, the how information flows between the different stakeholders. And of course, as you all know, we have three main stakeholders. We have the airplane operators, the states, and ICAO, which are all, they all have different roles to play in relation to um, collection of information, processing of information, and so making information available to the general public. So this is going to be a very uh, generic graphic that I'm going to go through, uh, just again to remind you of the different tasks for the different stakeholders. So in terms of uh, CO2 emissions, airplane operators, they collect information on their international flights. They aggregate this information, submit to the state. The state further aggregates CO2 emissions and provides information to ICAO. ICAO does further aggregation and makes information available on the public website of ICAO. Now, after this has been done, ICAO will uh, estimate what is referred to as the sector's growth factor for Corsia. That's an annual figure from 2021 onwards. We we'll provide this information to states and states will use this information to calculate the offsetting requirements for individual airplane operators. Finally, airplane operators will use this information to purchase emission units from the carbon markets, cancel those emission units, and then prepare reports, providing information on those cancellations of emission units to the state. The state will further aggregate this information and submit to ICAO. And again, after further aggregation, information will be made available on the ICAO website. I'm mentioning this process because uh, I just would like to put the CCR in context. What the CCR has been designed to do is to facilitate the reporting between states and ICAO and also to assist ICAO to make information available on its public website. The Corsia Central Registry does not address how states collect information from their plane operators. This has been left up to states to decide how to do, uh, but if states would like assistance from the Secretariat, we are here and we will do our best to help you. But the CCR does not address how information is collected from airplane operators uh, by states from other airplane operators. So after we have put uh, CCR in context, uh, let, us, let us see what kind of reporting requirements there are for states in terms of Corsia. In the table that you see on your screen, basically we have the first three periods for Corsia. It's a baseline which uh, uh, consists of the two years, 2019 and 2020. Then we have the pilot phase starting in 2021, the first phase in 2024, and the second phase will start in 2027 and will move forward. What uh, you see on this table is uh, basically different shading and which corresponds to different uh, periods. So baseline is white, uh, light gray is a pilot phase, light blue is the first phase, dark blue is the second phase, and will continue until 2035. On the left-hand side, what you also see is a list of five reporting areas. And this is uh, groupings of the information that states 
need to provide to ICAO in, in, in the context of implementation of Corsia. So information that will be reported is in relation to the airplane operators attributed to a state, verification bodies accredited, accredited in a state, CO2 emissions, Corsia eligible fuels, and cancelled emission units. Now, if you are looking for a specific year in uh, this in for the life of uh, Corsia, not all the information will arrive at the same time. So, for example, if you look at 2021, information on airplane operators and verification bodies will be reported in 2020. However, emissions, CO2 emissions, and information on Corsia eligible fuels will be reported 2022, so a year after at the end um, of um, the actual reporting year. And if we are uh, talking about cancelled emission units, this information will arrive in 2025 and will cover the whole uh, pilot phase. So I hope you appreciate that there are different reporting uh, timelines and reporting uh, windows, if you like, for different aspects of um, Corsia. One of the things that I would like to point out on this um, table is that there is one exception for Corsia eligible fuels, where states have the flexibility to either report annually, as you can see um, on this line over here, or they can decide to report once at the end of its a three year cycle. Again, this is up to states to decide how they want to, uh, to do that. In relation to information coming out from the CCR, what information would be made available? In accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4, there are five um, ICAO Corsia documents that um, the Secretariat will make available to all states through its public website. The first document is the uh, information, Corsia Central Registry information and data for the implementation of Corsia. This is an umbrella document and contains three other documents which are listed on this slide. The first one is the Corsia Aeroplane Operator to State Attributions. And I hope that uh, all of you have already seen that we have made uh, three editions of this document already available on our website. The third edition was published in December 2019, and this document will be updated regularly as we move forward. The next document is uh, the total 2020 CO2 emissions, and this value will be made available uh, by 31st of October 2021, and it will be used by states to determine the first year in which a new entrant has offsetting requirements. The next ICAO document is uh, the Corsia Annual Sectors Growth Factor. And for the first time, again, this will become available in 2022, 31st of October. And from then onwards, it will be updated annually. The last document in this series of documents on the CCR is the Corsia Central Registry Information and Data for Transparency. This document, again, we have already made five editions available. And uh, the reason for that is that um, the first thing that it contains is the list of verification bodies that have achieved accreditation in states. So to facilitate um, airplane operators selecting verification bodies that they have achieved accreditation, we have updated this uh, document quite regularly. The fifth edition was published in uh, March 2020 and we are also scheduling another edition uh, very soon. So this is one part of the information in this particular document. Over time, this document will grow in volume and will contain a lot more information uh, that will be extremely helpful for all of you as you are doing work on, on Corsia. So the next uh, part of this document will be total average CO2 emissions uh, for the baseline, the years 2019 and 20. Then, um, as we move forward from 2021 onwards, there will be information on annual CO2 emissions aggregated again on its state pair, but also information on CO2 emissions for its airplane operator. Um, once we receive information on uh, Corsia eligible fuels claim, this will be included in that document. And um, in 2025, for the first time, we will make available information on offsetting requirements and emission units cancelled. 
So these are the five documents that um, are direct results of uh, the CCR, of the information collected in the context of, um, of the CCR. Uh, Jane mentioned earlier in her introductory remarks that we have already made a number of leaflets available. Uh, last year, we prepared two of them, which are specific for the CCR, and I hope you all, of, all of you uh, have them. If you don't have them, you can download them from our uh, website. It is uh, leaflet number six and number seven. Uh, they provide some uh, information, general information on uh, the CCR, and some of this information I already uh, present to you in, uh, in my slides so far. So this is um, what happened. This is a history. Let's um, move forward to see how the CCR has been implemented. The Corsia Central Registry has been implemented as an online and user-friendly web application that is supported by a database and it's been hosted using cloud services. There are four key features of the CCR and I'm just going to uh, go through them briefly on this slide. First of all, um, be aware that each state has only one account in the CCR. However, multiple users can have access to this account. And these users, they have to be authorized users. And each one of those users will have access to only one state's account. So this is extremely important for you to remember, one account per state, authorized users, only unique access to one state's account for its user. Now, the CCR also has a secure web interface. And to get access to the CCR, as you already know, you need a username and a password. Of course, your password um, is, um, is protected. And there are a number of authentication protocols in the background to make sure that the, the right people have access to the right uh, accounts. And this is extremely important because of the potential to have confidential data in the, in the CCR. So we need to make sure that each user has a unique password and a unique username. And also it is extremely important that all of you keep this information to yourselves. Please do not share your password or your username with anybody else. As again, um, maybe by doing that, accidentally you may be given access to confidential information to people that may, may not be authorized to have access to any such information. The third feature is that the CCR has a very simple, um, a, a simple interface to, pro, to allow users to enter information into the CCR. And this can be done in two different ways, either manually through a number of predefined web forms, or what you can do is you can provide information in bulk uh, using what is called the comma separated value files and upload information in one go instead of going one by one. But I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna demonstrate this to you later today when we look into the CO2 emissions and how this can be done um, in, the, in the CCR. The fourth feature is the traceability and the data integrity. The uh, CCR tracks every single action from all the users. And every single action is timestamped and everybody can see who did what and when. This is extremely important, especially for Corsia focal points. In case you have to go back and reverse an action, at least you have an understanding of who initiated the action, when, and you can contact this person and have further discussion with him or her uh, to find out what has happened uh, in case of problems. Another thing to be mindful of is that once you have submit information to ICAO and this information um, has been uh, processed and has been logged and I'm gonna explain you a bit more about how the information flows through the system, it cannot be deleted. Once you have submit information, it will stay in the system. And um, if, there, if there is need to make changes, then um, the previous version will be archived into the system to make sure that the CCR has a, a complete track of all the information uh, over time. One of the um, important features of the CCR, it allows uh, for its use from different users. So from, um, uh, from your perspective, from a state's perspective, there are two main user groups 
that um, the CCR allows for. First of all, what we refer to as the Corsia focal point. And as you all know, a Corsia focal point is been nominated by his or her respective state. And in the context of the CCR, a Corsia focal point can upload and can change state specific information. And at the same time, the Corsia focal point also has the responsibility of approving and submitting the information and data to ICAO. The second group of users um, is what we call the state user in the context of the CCR. And so uh, this is a group of users which are nominated by the Corsia focal point of a state. It could be one or it could be more than one. And they will have access to functions relating to uploading and changing state specific data. However, the key difference here is that a state user cannot approve and cannot submit information to ICAO. This is the sole responsibility of the Corsia focal point. Another thing to keep in mind is that this state user group is optional. We understand that not all states have the luxury of having more than one person involved in, um, in, in the implementation of Corsia. If you have um, a situation where you have more than one people working on, um, on Corsia, then one of those people will be identified as the Corsia focal point and all the other ones will be state users. Again, this is optional. The CCR works with Corsia focal point alone, but it can also work with a Corsia focal point and a state user or users. You can have one Corsia focal point, only one per state, but multiple state users. The third group of users is uh, what is referred to as the IKO super user. This is IKO staff responsible for the management of the information and data. And the super user will check the information submitted by states and also will prepare the IKO Corsia documents. It's a very important thing to keep in mind in terms of the three different groups of users. Another feature of the CCR is how information is stored. And I mentioned um, in one of my earlier slides that there is a web application supported by a database. And those of you that are familiar with databases, they store information in records. So for the CCR, all the information and data which is uploaded into the system is stored in individual year records. And each year record is associated with a specific state a specific reporting year, and also a specific reporting area. So, for example, if you saw in the system a record which is called Canada 2019 aeroplane operators, I believe this is straightforward what this record contains. It contains information and data for all aeroplane operators attributed to Canada for the year 2019. So this is a feature of the system that keeps track of the information and associates specific data with a specific state, specific year, and a specific reporting area. Now, in a, in a simplified way, you can think of an account of a state as a filing cabinet. So if you, you know, buy a filing cabinet from your office to store your and, 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 and basically organize your papers, then what you're going to start with is an empty filing cabinet. But over time, you will actually fill in this cabinet with information. And you can imagine each one of those uh, drawers of your cabinet as a year record. So for 2019, uh, for the reporting year 2019, there will be three um, drawers in your cabinet full. First one will be with airplane operators information, second one on verification bodies, the third one with CO2 emissions data. Same applies for 2020. And as time goes by, you will be filling in your, um, all your, you know, the filing cabinet with information. And from 2021 onwards, in addition to uh, the three categories of information we have here, there will be information on eligible fuels. And eventually there will be also information to be stored there for the council emission units. Of course, we saw you here up to 2023, but uh, this extends all the way up to the end of uh, life of, uh, of, of Corsia, as we know it. 
So this is a, a simplified way to think about what your account and how your account stores information. But if you open any one of these drawers, then what you're gonna see is uh, information stored in a specific way. So within its year records, all the information and data is organized in what is referred to as entries. And uh, in these two examples that you see on the screen for aeroplane operators, one entry is associated with a specific aeroplane operator. And again, within the entry, there are different fields. There is a field to identify what is the name of the operator, another field for the attribution method, another field for the address, and so on and so forth. And you, you will uh, we'll explain some of these things to you later in, in, a, in this presentation uh, today. If you are referring to CO2 emissions, then a specific entry will be associated with a state pair, for example, where again you need to identify what is a departing state, what is the arrival state, what are the CO2 emissions, and so on and, and so forth. So this is how information is stored into the CCR. And uh, you know, these things are important uh, because as we move forward, we're going to be using this terminology, the year records, and also the entries, um, you know, more and more. Another very important aspect is uh, to have a good understanding of how information flows uh, once you start using the, the CCR. So what uh, the CCR does is it gives a status to a specific year record. And when you create a new year record, the system will automatically assign a status of in progress to that year record. A year record which is in progress, it can be modified. So you can add information, you can edit, you can delete information um, everywhere in that particular year record. And this can be done both by the Corsia focal point and um, any state users that they may, be, uh, they may have access uh, to the state's account. Once all the information um, is done, is complete, uh, editing has been has finished, uh, you are confident that this is the information that you want to uh, provide to ICAO, then there is a second step before you go to the actual submission where the Corsia focal point needs to make sure that all the information is correct, check all the information, and then sign off in order to be submitted to ICAO. So after all the information is in, um, a state user or a Corsia focal point can change the status of a year record to complete. So now a complete year record can only be reviewed and can be, can be edited. So information can be deleted, but only by the Corsia focal point. State users will not be able to make any changes to a year record with a status of complete. So complete means that the Corsia focal point is in the process of reviewing the information. And after uh, the Corsia focal point is 100% confident that this is information to be submitted, then what the Corsia focal point can do is can change the status of this information to ready. And this is when information is submitted to ICAO. It's submitted to ICAO and then the ICAO super user will process this information, will check for any problems with the format of the information uh, to make sure that everything is correct. Once the status changes from complete to ready, this particular record cannot be edited by Corsia Focal Point or by any state user. There is an exception, and I'm gonna explain this um, you know, after I go through the next uh, status. So once the IKO super user has checked all the information and um, has identified that there are no problems uh, with, uh, with the format of the information, then the ICAO super user will change the status from ready to locked. And when a year record is locked, then it can be used to produce reports and also to do various calculations specifically to Corsia. For these two statuses, the ready and the locked, there is a possibility for these records to be further processed. We understand we are all humans, we all make mistakes. And uh, if a Corsia focal point identifies after it has changed the status from complete to ready, so the information is already with ICAO, 
let's say you know the CFP has um, um, has realized that um, there was a mistake in the reported data. They could the Corsia focal point can ask ICAO to release this particular year record in order to make some adjustments, make some corrections, make some changes. And to do this, there is a specific process, and we'll explain this in the second segment under the service request. Also, a locked record can also be a further amended, so the information in it. Um, if again, the Corsia focal point identifies that there is a mistake in the information which was submitted, was checked, has been locked, uh, then again, the CFP, the Corsia focal point, can request ICAO to unlock this particular record and to make changes. However, one of the things to keep in mind is that if ICAO has already used the information in this particular record and has calculated the sector of growth factor, it has calculated the total annual CO2 emissions for international aviation, then any changes that are made uh, to this particular record will not ref will not be reflected in a revised uh, figure for the sector's growth factor or the CO2 emissions. Only going to be for information purposes only. Another thing that I would like to point out that there is another fifth ICAO st uh, um, status for the uh, year record, but this has been reserved for uh, ICAO. Um, this is called ready ICAO data in parentheses. And this designates a year record which has been created by ICAO. And this is to address a very specific situation which uh, ICAO hopes will never happen. But in the unlikely event that a state is not able to submit data for whatever reason, then in accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4, ICAO can fill the data gap with its own data sources and its own way. So if this happens, and if ICAO um, is, needs to create a year record and upload information, this will be shown as ready ICAO data. Of course, this information can be updated by the states. Um, if, if the state, you know, after the fact, they, uh, they realize that they can find information, but um, any record that you see with ready ICAO data, you have to understand that this is information coming from ICAO and not from the state itself. Now, in terms of the reporting process in the CCR, uh, this is again the way the CCR has implemented is um, a very simple four-step process. So the first thing that you need to do in order to provide information to the CCR, you first of all to select a reporting area. And by reporting area is what um, I showed you earlier in one of my first tables, we have the five reporting areas, airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, and so on and so forth. So first of all, the first thing that you need to do is to select a reporting area. Once you have done this, you have to determine whether a year record for this reporting area actually exists. If it doesn't exist, then you have to create a year record as a Corsia focal point. And I hope you remember from my previous slides, the uh, the default status for a new year record is in progress. If the year record exists, or after you have created a year record, you select it, and then you can add and edit, you can delete information and data in, um, in that particular year record. After this has been completed, all information and data is in, then the status can be changed to complete, and then the Corsia focal point checks the information, and then if the information is absolutely correct, they can submit to ICAO by changing the status again to ready. And the last part is for the ICAO super user to lock a specific year record and use the information to publish ICAO Corsia documents. So it's a very simple process with these four steps. And I'll give you a bit more information about the specificities of each step in, um, in the following slides. This is a summary of uh, the uh, different permissions that different users have within the CCR. Here, the main difference, again, between the state user and the Corsia focal point 
is that the Corsia focal point can create a year record, a state user cannot, and the Corsia focal point can submit to ICAO, state user cannot. However, both the Corsia focal point and the state user, they can both add, edit, delete information in an existing year record. In relation to the ICAO super user, the ICAO super user can create a year record, can also add information. I mentioned earlier that um, with, in the context of Annex 16, Volume 4, if a, and a, if a state is not able to provide information, then ICAO will do so. And this is, that's why ICAO super user also has this, uh, these functionalities available to uh, him or her. So an ICAO super user can create a year record, can add information, of course, uh, submit to ICAO is not an applicable uh, function, and the ICAO super user is responsible for the publication of the preparation of the documents and the publication on the ICAO website after the documents have been approved by the ICAO Council. So let us now go into um, a bit more details in terms of how the information flows between different users. And on, on, this, on this slide, I will try to summarize everything that I explained to you so far in terms of you know who does what in the CCR. And in this particular slide, I'm using an example where a state has both a Corsia focal point and a state user. However, as I mentioned before, a state user is not mandatory, is not needed for the functioning of the CCR. It's a luxury. And if states have more than two, more than one person working on the CCR on, the, on Corsia, then they can identify one of them as the Corsia focal point and the other one as a state user for the CCR. So in this example, I'm going to show you how the information flows. And again, um, I'll try to go slowly. But um, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to use the chat function to ask your questions. So again, starting with the creation of the year record, the Corsia focal point is the only a user in this context that is able to create a new year record. And as we mentioned before, the default status of a new a year record is in progress. This means that both the Corsia focal point and the state user is able to add and edit information in that particular year record. So once this is done, then the state user can change the status of the year record to complete. And this will trigger an automatic email notification that will be sent to the Corsia focal point, informing the Corsia focal point that the state user has changed the status to complete. And now it is the turn of the Corsia focal point to review the information and data. So the Corsia focal point has, um, has the responsibility to check the information, review the information. And as I mentioned before, a complete year record can be changed by the Corsia focal point. So the Corsia focal point can add, delete information from the year record. So the, uh, the Corsia focal point will, uh, re will make a determination whether any revisions are needed. And again, if the revisions can be done by the Corsia focal point, he or she will uh, initiate those, those changes. However, in the case that the Corsia focal point needs the help of the state user, the Corsia focal point can change the status of the year record to in progress. Because if you remember from my previous slides, a complete record is a, a read only record, cannot be changed by the state user. Only in progress record can be changed by the state. So the Corsia focal point changes the status back to in progress. Um, an email message will be sent by the system to the state user informing that there is a need to add more information into a specific if, however, there is no need for any revisions, then the Corsia focal point can change the status to ready. And this again triggers another automatic email notification to ICAO to inform that a submission has been made by a specific state. So the ICAO super user will check the information for, um, uh, for formatting, if there are any formatting problems. Um, again, I would like to point out that the ICAO will not be doing any validation of information. There is no mandate for the Secretariat to check whether the, the data is correct. Only going to be checking whether the format is correct and has been submitted in the correct format. 
So if any errors have been found, then what the IKO super user will do is will change the status back to in progress. Another email message will be sent to the Corsia focal point, informing them that there is need to make some changes because some errors were found and there will be explanation of what these errors are. And again, the process will continue again all the way back to uh, submitting uh, to ICAO. But if there are no errors, then the, the super user will change the status to locked. And then this information will be used in the publication of uh, Corsia documents. This particular process applies to all five reporting areas. So for airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, eligible fuels, and cancelled emission units, you have exactly the same process. You will see again uh, this particular uh, data flow process before we start with, um, with our CO2 emissions in uh, segment two. Uh, but again, this is a very important one for you to keep in mind and get, you know, be familiar with uh, how uh, information goes from between the different users in, in the system. So this is uh, basically the end of my presentation as an introduction to the CCR. Just, um, you know, in summary, some things to remember. Uh, each Corsia focal point and state user will be connected to one IKEO state. And uh, so each Corsia focal point and state user will not have access to information of any other IKEO state. In accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4, as I mentioned before, if an IKEO state is not able to provide annual aggregated uh, emissions report to IKEO through the CCR, then IKEO can fill the gap uh, using its own data sources and also in, for the context of calculating uh, the CO2 emissions and the sector's growth factor in a given year. Um, in the system, this year record will be noted as ready, parenthesis, IKEO data. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, how the status of a year record changes. So it goes from in progress, which is a year record that can be changed both by the Corsia focal point and the state user to complete. A complete record can only be edited by the Corsia focal point. Then to ready, which means information has been submitted to ICAO. And then ready record is locked. It cannot be changed by the Corsia focal point and the state user. And then finally, uh, the last status is locked, which means the information has been checked by ICAO and is ready to be used for the production of, um, of documents. And now again, um, I mentioned this earlier, a year record with the status of ready or locked can be again changed at the request of a Corsia focal point uh, to ICAO and we'll show you in the second segment how this can be done. So this is the end of um, this presentation. In, um, Jane mentioned that we, we provided four more, um, four more leaflets, and these are specific for the CCR. The one with the letter A at the top right corner on the, on the front page provides an introduction to the Corsia Center Registry and summarizes the things that I explained in my, um, in my presentation. Of course, not everything, but some of the key points in relation to the different user groups, in relation to the um, uh, permissions that each user group has, and also a brief description of the data flow process uh, for the system. So I hope this is uh, useful for you. Um, you know, the format, if you have any comments on these leaflets, of course, all comments are welcome. Um, and uh, over time, gonna be increasing the number of leaflets um, as we uh, add more functionality to the CCR in relation to eligible fuels and also cancellations of emission units. For now, we have produced uh, four of those leaflets. For today's training, uh, the one with the letter A and the one with the letter D, so alpha and delta, these two we're gonna use, uh, are, are specifically important for today's uh, training. The other two on uh, the, the one on airplane operators and the one on um, verification bodies, we will use in the face-to-face -face training that will happen in the context of the course here regional seminars. Um, okay, so there is one question. However, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm not able to say it. 
So, uh, Ji Young, can you please read the question? Sure. So, um, for clarification, in order for the uh, Corsia focal point to amend data, does the status first need to be con con um, converted to in progress? That's a question from Michael Robinson. Uh, can you repeat the question again, please? For, uh, uh, for clarification, in order for the Corsia focal point to amend the data, does the status first need to be converted to in progress? So I, I believe uh, what he meant was from complete to yes. back to in progress. Yeah. Um, you know, let me um, go back to one of my slides um, for this question. On this slide, what you can see, I hope you can see it, is that an in-progress record is, of course, the default status uh, of a new year record is in progress. And um, a year record which is identified as in progress, it can be edited by the Corsia focal point and the state user. A complete record is the one that um, can only be edited by the Corsia focal point. Um, again, all the changes, additions, deletions can be done, but only the Corsia focal point. A status in progress, again, identifies that this particular year record can be changed by both the Corsia focal point and the state user. I hope this is clear now. Um, Stelius, can you see the chat now? Or I, I, cannot, to... I cannot see the chat, I'm sorry. Oh. I don't know why, but I cannot see the chat. Sure. No worries. Um, so there was an additional question about uh, nomination of a uh, state user. So sure. I answered that they can be nominated by Corsia Focal Point and doesn't have to be nominated by the CAA. Exactly. Um, and this can be done question. through the CCR, and we'll show you later how this is done in the context of uh, the service request, or by sending us an email message, the Corsia Focal Point, send an email message to ICAO at uh, ccr at ICAO.int to give us information, the name, the first name, family name, and the email address of the, the state user, and we'll create an account for him or her. And uh, another additional question came in. So based on Annex 16, Volume 4, uh, it's mandatory for the new entrant uh, should be included in the list of airplane operators in the CCR. That was a question. Uh, yes, the in relation to airplane operators, then this will uh, focus um, on training in uh, the upcoming in in person uh, regional seminars. Uh, so the focus today is the CO2 emissions and not uh, the actual reporting on um, airplane operators. Uh, but again, you know, very briefly for the airplane operators, uh, this is uh, up to the state to decide. Um, on the list of operators that will be applicable for the following year. And um, this will be determined in accordance with Annex 16, Volume 4. Uh, but more information on this, um, this is out of the scope of this particular training, we can provide at a later stage or offline. Thank you. Um, another came, uh, another question came, um, is there any criteria for choosing this uh, state user? Um, in other words, is there any restrictions on choosing the state user? There is no restriction other than uh, making sure that uh, the Corsia Focal Point has the understanding that the persons that will be uh, assigned as state users will potentially have access to confidential information. So uh, they have to make sure that the people that can actually are authorized to handle confidential information. Um, so um, other than that, there is no restriction. The, uh, the state will have to decide Again, when the CCR was being developed and designed, the idea was that the state users will also be state representatives, uh, people from within the administration that will be there to help the Corsia Focal Point with uploading information. It is not expected that, for example, representatives of airplane operators will be state users. That's not uh, the purpose of that. It is only people that are there to assist with uploading of information from within uh, the administration. Any other question? No, there is no uh, another question. So let us now go into the actual CCR and uh, see if um, you know some. See what are some of its uh, main features. So again, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, to 
access the CCR, use your web browser, and um, one warning here, the uh, CCR has been optimized uh, to be used on um, a number of web browsers, but this does not include Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is, is not being supported basically anymore by Microsoft anyway, so uh, it's, it's on its way out. Um, if, you are, if you want to use a Microsoft product, then please use Edge, uh, which is basically the successor of Internet Explorer, and there it would work perfectly. You can use Firefox, you can use uh, Chrome, um, you can use you know, other browsers. Uh, make sure you have the latest version of the browsers available uh, to make sure that all the functionalities of the tool uh, work properly. So once you, um, you, know, you, you have your browser installed, just type in corsia.turanto.com and you will end up on this landing page. Then what you need to do is uh, just type in uh, your username and your passwords, and then you will see on the screen the home page. That's what you're supposed to see on your screen. So right now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I am logged in um, as the Corsia focal point of uh, Sao Tome and Principe. You will see the name of your state at the top left, uh, just below the IKEO logo. And also you will see the role there that uh, you as a user have. So again, I'm the Corsia focal point. Some of this information is also reflected in the box, which is called user information. There again, you will see uh, your name, you will also see your email and also see your own. If any of this information is not correct, you cannot change it and you have to let us IKEO know and we will make any change that need to be made. Uh, so again, this information is supposed to be correct. Otherwise, uh, please let us know uh, immediately. You can see also this, the same information or part of this information if you click on uh, the username, which is at the top right corner of your screen next to the person icon. So if you click on there, there will be a pop-up where again, you see your email address, your IKEO state, your role. And this is an area where you can use to change your, the passwords if you want, and also receive some very preliminary information about the application. Right now it is empty, but over time we will fill this in with more uh, information. And also you can use that to properly log out from the CCR. What you will see on your screen is all the way up to the gray box down here. You will not see the bottom one, which is a special one for me, as I have special status in the CCR uh, as one of the super users. So what you're gonna see over here is all the way down to the gray, the dark gray uh, box. So this is the first part of your screen, providing information about, uh, about yourself uh, as a user. The next box right below it is called IKEO state information. And there you have uh, two basically options. One is to view IKEO state, which means to view information about your IKEO state. And the other one is to view uh, the user profile of the different users in the CCR. Um, over time, you will notice this uh, more and more, become more familiar, but you will see there is an eye icon next to it. An eye icon in the CCR means this information, you can, you can see it, but you cannot change it. You have very limited um, editing functionality in terms of um, these uh, specific uh, parts of the CCR. So you can see the information from IKEO state, but you cannot change anything in that uh, part of it. And the same with the one below, you can view uh, the, your, users, uh, for your user profile, but again, you have very limited uh, functionality in terms of changing things. And um, I will show you uh, how to do that. So if you want to have a look at information about your IKEO state, click on the eye icon. And what you will see on your screen is a page like this. Of course, I see the name of my state, uh, Sao Tom and Precip. You will see your own state. And again, you see another eye icon next to it. If you click on it, there you will land on this page, uh, which has basically five different tabs. The first tab um, is read only. You cannot, you, you cannot change anything there. And you will see the name of your state again, 
There is another field which is called IKO state code. It's not being used right now, but it may be used later, um, in, maybe used in a future, future point in time. And also at the bottom, what we will do as IKO, we will set um, these three parameters over here. You will not be able to change that. And this indicates whether your state is a small island developing state, whether it's a least developing country, or if it is a landlocked developing country. And um, this again, it will be done by ICAO. You don't have to uh, worry about that, nothing to change, it's just for information. The second tab is called CCR user. In my case, it's empty, but in your case, you should be able to see there your name with uh, your first name, your last name, your email. And um, actually, you uh, can click on the um, on the icon right next to your name, and you can go in, and you can you, can, you have uh, the possibility to change a few things in um, in that field in relation to adding your middle name if you want, or to add your title, to add your phone number. But again, this information is optional; it is not needed for anything in the system. The only information we need, as I care, is your first name, your last name, your email. That's it. Everything else uh, is, is optional. The third tab is called Corsia Participation. And again, this is a tab that you will be able to see uh, what is uh, the, your uh, state's Corsia Participation starting from 2021, and this will be updated every year. Uh, for, uh, for my particular state, South Roman Principe is empty because uh, my state has not volunteered volunteer to participate. However, other states that they have volunteered to participate, they will already see that the status from 2021 um, is, um, is participation in Corsia. And again, as I mentioned, this will change over time based on information we receive from states in terms of participation, voluntary participation. And from 2027 onwards, participation will be determined on the basis of RTK data for 2018. And you can find RTK data for 2018 in the next tab, which is called RTK data. And this is again information that ICAO will upload. You, you don't have access to this information um, in terms of changing this information in the CCR. Uh, as ICAO collects information, makes it available uh, to the public, and also this information will be reflected in this particular tab for its state. The fifth tab is called IKO State Journal. And this is a very important one, uh, especially for the Corsia focal points, but for everyone in your state, where you have a complete record of all the changes made into this specific part of uh, the CCR. So you are in the page which is called IKO State. Um, and what you can see over here is all the users that over time they accessed this particular page of the CCR. So let me show you have a total 31 actions taken. So let me change that one so you can see all of them. And if you go all the way down to, um, to the end, so this is the first time that this account was created. And again, uh, this is when we started development of uh, the CCR. So the administrator of the system created uh, the IKO state called Sao, Tom, and Precip. And then over time, different people within uh, the system, they took different actions. And this is all recorded and it's kept and it will be until the end um, of, um, of, of the use of the system will be there for everyone to see who did what, when. And again, this is extremely important, I think, for especially for the Corsia focal points, to have an understanding how the account is being used who has access, who does what. So if you need to reverse a specific action, then you can go back to the state user uh, or um, you, know, you can ask maybe you know, somebody else um, in relation to specific changes and then decide an appropriate course of action. So this is how you get access to uh, information about your um, IKO state, uh, but you can also get information about yourself, uh, your user profile, by clicking on uh, the eye icon there. Again, in my case, this is empty, but in your case, uh, you will see your name there and so you have access to some um, you know, very sort of brief information about your account. I'm gonna go back to home. Um, these are the first two parts of your homepage. 
Um, one of the most important features is the navigation menu on the left hand side. And this is where you can actually, you can use this navigation menu to go between, to jump between different parts of the CCR. And here, what you will see, it is the five reporting areas. So report airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, eligible fuels, and canceled emission units. And for Corsia focal point, there is a sixth one, which is called service request. State users will not see this because they are not able to create a service request. Only a Corsia focal point can do so. So you can use this, um, uh, you know, this navigation menu to move back and forth uh, between, you know, different parts of um, the CCR uh, and can go back to, to home. Um, you can, what you can do also as well, if you, if your screen is too small, um, let me just, and you want to minimize your navigation menu, you can do so by clicking uh, the left pointing arrow at the bottom. So if you do that, then basically you're only going to see the icons, uh, not the text. But if you hover over the icons, you will see uh, what its icon represents. And you can maximize it again by clicking on the arrow at the bottom and you're back to where you were before. Now, this navigation menu is also reflected in the bottom part of your screen where you have six boxes and each one of them um, is again corresponds to each of the navigation uh, to items in the navigation menu. This, the bottom part of the screen will become useful over time as you start adding records into your, into your account. If you want to, to search for a specific year record, you can do this by using you know, this part of your homepage. Uh, again, for now it is empty. And uh, you know, the, the vast emptiness of it is also reflected with a number zero that you will see both in the navigation menu items, but also at the bottom part of your screen. The, the number zero indicates that there are no year records for any of these reporting areas in your account. So your account is brand new, there is no information in it whatsoever. Over time, as you add information, this will change. And as you add year records, the zero will become one, will become two, three, four, uh, whatever, uh, over time. The next part of your homepage is uh, what is called My Favorites, uh, which is uh, a box next to the user information, um, more or less, you know, sort of top middle in my, in my screen. And this is where you can add basically shortcuts uh, for specific pages of the CCR. So, for example, you saw earlier that, um, you know, we when we were into the view ICAO state. So if you click on the view ICAO state, uh, you click again on the South Tome PC, and then you have these tabs. So let's say that, you know, Corsia participation is one of your favorite tabs. You want to have quick access. And instead of clicking four times to get here, what you can do is you can create a shortcut for this particular tab. And you can do this by actually clicking on the star icon at the top of the screen there. So if you click on the star icon, you will be asked to add a name. So you can say my, my shortcut. I mean, what, whatever makes sense to you, right? I mean, this is free text. You can put your own text or whatever you want. And once you have done this, if you go back to your home page, then your shortcut is here. Your favorite is there. And if you click on it, you automatically get to this particular page. So you avoid having to click, you know, four times to get to a specific place where you want to be. Um, you can do this from your, from your home page by, by creating these favorites. There is no limit to how many favorites you can create, but I would caution you not to <laughs> add too many there because then it's going to become really cluttered and it might be diminish the, the usefulness of this particular feature. Um, of course, you don't need to have any shortcuts for this uh, reporting areas because they're already there and they're going to be there everywhere you are in the CCR. Uh, but if there are, you know, two or three, whatever pages that you visit often or you want to have quick access, then you can use this particular feature uh, of, of the CCR. If you want to delete it, uh, it is easy to delete by clicking on uh, the bin icon like this, and then it is gone. Uh, it is, it's been deleted. 
Uh, and as I mentioned, there is no limit to how many favorites you can add. Another uh, feature of, um, of the home page, and also not only of the home page, but other pages as well in, in the CCR, but I will demonstrate this to you here, is uh, the help that we have built into uh, the CCR. So there is a question mark. And this question mark appears in um, a lot of uh, pages of the CCR. So if you click on it, then you will get a pop-up like this, where you have uh, different menu items, and each one of them represents information that has been inserted into the CCR just to help the user. So for example, if you want information about how to report CO2 emissions, you click there, and there you have information about the uh, deadlines, for example, you know, the top part. Also in the second part, how to report uh, CO2 emissions data gives you some very basic information, uh, reminders in relation to how you can um, add a year record. Also, it explains a bit more about what is meant by CO2 emissions for state pairs, airplane operators, and then, um, you know, what is uh, the significance of CO2 emissions uh, for the offsetting requirements. So it is information for the user just to get, you know, a quick, quick access to some uh, help information. And again, over time, we will try to improve this part of the tool, add more information and more tips, if you like, for reporting. On this particular item, on this particular topic, on report CO2 emissions, you will see there is, uh, there is a second tab, which is called Properties. If you click on that, you will see, find information about um, uh, different data statuses and uh, what it means in terms of um, who can uh, change it and who can uh, do what. And again, this information, um, as I mentioned, will improve over time. And also a third tab in relation to actions is about releasing a specific year record or unlocking um, a year record. But we're going to discuss about these things in the second segment of, uh, of our training today. You can go back to the home screen of the help by clicking on the home button at the bottom. And then you can um, basically you can look at different parts of the information we have, the help information we have built into, into the CCR. Uh, if you click on close, the pop-up will disappear from your screen. Um, one thing that I would like to show you in relation to this, that uh, I mentioned that the question mark also exists on other pages. So if you go into the report CO2 emissions, you see that um, it is there, uh, the, uh, the question mark. So if you click there, you will not end up at the home page, but you will end up on the actual help uh, for reporting CO2 emissions. So this will get you automatically the information on this particular page. Um, on how to report CO2 emissions uh, using the CCR. Of course, from here, if you want to go back to the main, um, you know, the home, um, the home, the, the home page for the uh, for the help, then you click on the home, then you see again all the different options that you have to get um, information. Um, so this is what I, I want to demonstrate to you. I hope you all had you all have you didn't have any problems with getting access to the CCR. Uh, you have you all had the chance to follow what I was doing on the screen, and you can you know do it yourself. But if you have any questions on any parts of um, um, of this uh, part of the application, then uh, please let us know. Uh, send us questions. Again, I for some reason, I cannot see uh, my chat, uh, but I will rely on Ji Yung to convey any questions that um, uh, maybe they're pending. Still, yes, there was no question yet. <clears throat> okay, all right. Okay, there were no questions. Okay. Well, if there are if there are no questions, oh, I see there is one. Um, can you read the question? Or um, unfortunately, I cannot. I don't know why, but I cannot read it. Okay, you can just check that there's something new, right? Um, so uh, the question uh, reads: How do you determine the use level from the view CTR user profile? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Yeah, me neither. Um, the, the question came from Michael Robinson. Can you sort of clarify your question a, a bit more? Thank you.
I mean, when, um, just maybe uh, to say something about the different users, when IKEO creates the accounts for its user, its user will be given a specific role. So there will be one Corsia focal point per state, and then there will be state users also for the same state if state users are nominated by the Corsia focal point. Uh, so the system itself identifies the different permissions that each role has and uh, automatically sets the permissions for each user in accordance with the role. Um, I don't know if that was, you know, what you were asking with your question, but uh, maybe you have already provided some uh, further um, explanations. Yeah, so uh, he provided a further sort of clarification. So it gives you the list. What are their user status, Corsia focal point or state user? So I think if you, um, Stelius, if you probably check the view CCR user profile, um, probably the, the the example that we showed because there's no user profile uh, included oh, there. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, you what? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, I, I understand how what, what, what you mean. Uh, well, each user knows what kind of role they have into the system. Um, of course, the role of its user will be visible at the top left corner below the uh, IKEO logo. It is not part of this table uh, that you see over here. Uh, so again, in my case, it's empty, but in your case, we have a, definitely the name of the Corsia focal point and all the state users. But um, I mean, the Corsia focal point will know uh, who the Corsia focal point is. And of course, the state users will know who the Corsia focal point is. Um, and everybody else is a state user. But this is not reflected specifically in uh, this table. Um, th th that's all I can say about this. And I hope I, I, I answered your question. Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's an, another question from Ivana. So please, if the Corsia focal point creates a state user, will be the uh, will will he or she uh, view this, the whole screen as we could see or not uh, with all the helps and other information? Yes. Well, first of all, the uh, the account for the Corsia focal point and the state users are created by IKEO. So there is no expectation of the Corsia focal point will create an account for a state user. That's, that's to be very clear. But um, in terms of what the Corsia focal point and the state user will see is identical, except for the service request. So the screen that you see right now, the home page, will be exactly the same for both the Corsia focal point and the state user, except for the service request. So the course the the state user will not have access to a service request option. Uh, that's 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 the only difference. There will be other differences, uh, and we'll discuss those in the second segment when Ji Yun will uh, walk you through how to report CO2 emissions, and that there are different uh, permissions as we discussed in the in my earlier presentation for different users, and this cannot be reflected in the status of um, of its user. Sorry, uh, so is there is just one just came in. Oh, um, this CCR is a final for us to use, not for the training purposes. The uh, the version one um, again right now you have access to a training version of the CCR, so this is not the final version. But what you see today is probably ninety nine point nine percent final. Uh, but once we have the version one deployed, then we will of course go through the same process you will receive um, an email message you will be asked to set up your password um you know the password that we have created is only for the uh, for the training version of the, the ccr uh, it will not be the same uh, you can change it you do whatever you want to do with your password it's your own uh, your own personal information ikeo does not store passwords for the users so you have to make sure you remember it as well uh, we expect the version one of uh, the CCR to become available um, in May. Uh, we, don't know, we don't have the exact date yet, uh, but we hope that you know in the first couple of weeks of May, uh, the system should be up and running. Another question came in, is there any connection between Corsia Focal Point and state user uh, through this application? 
Well, both users will have access to the same information. So there is, if you remember from my earlier slide, there is one uh, CCR account for one for per IKO state. So the Corsia focal point uh, of um, an IKO state and a state user state will have access to the same information. So they will see the same information on the screen. Otherwise, there is no direct connection. Um, there will be, of course, automated notifications. Um, if you remember from the data flow process, when you change the status of a year record, there is um, automated email messages that have been sent between different users at different points in time. But other than that, there is no other direct um, connection. Again, the state user and the Corsia focal point, they have access to the same information in a CCR account of an IKO state. That's, that's the main connection. Um, there was a question about, not, not specifically for CCR, but uh, can we, um, the question reads, can we ask for, uh, for uh, postponing the date of to summit um, report? I believe CO2 uh, emissions report, I believe, um, what he's referring to. I believe this, um, this question is in relation to the impacts of uh, COVID-19. Um, I hope you all appreciate this is not you know, the purpose of uh, this particular training, this goes beyond the scope, but um, uh, very briefly, the ICAO Council is already looking at the impacts of uh, COVID-19 and uh, the ICAO Council will provide further guidance if guidance is needed. But for now, we are following what is in Annex 16, Volume 4. Uh, there is no decision taken or anything like this in terms of delaying the reporting of um, emissions. So we are following uh, the timeline that is in Appendix 1 of the Annex 16, Volume 4, and we are looking into uh, states providing information for 2019 by 31st of August 2020. Any further guidance as a result of decisions by ICAO Council will be provided to all of you, all states, once um, the ICAO Council has taken those decisions. I don't know uh, if the two guys on the line, if if uh, he would like to add anything more to that. No, no, this is Tetsuya Tanaka, Chief Climate Change, no, not at this stage. Well, let's, let's keep focusing on the CCR. As Terius mentioned, there may be a discussion in the council to consider the implication of the current difficult situation to, to everybody, to aviation as a whole including possible implication for the implementation of the COSIA and some design elements. But uh, let's, let's wait for the, the possible discussion in the council and indication. If any, if any indication or decision coming from the council, we will inform everybody or the focal point immediately. But at, just for, as for today, let's focus on the training on the CCR to make sure the implementation as a status quo. Thank you. Yes, there was another question, but I believe uh, Tetsuya's answer has already addressed that because it, uh, the question uh, was about COVID-19 and the impact on the baseline. <laughs> okay, so again, um, 15 minutes break. Well, it's gonna be a little bit shorter than 15 minutes. So be back here at uh, 4.45 with uh, segment two of our, uh, of our training today. Uh, focusing on the CO2 emissions. <laughs>